Environmentalist Alexander Verbeek joins us now live from Stockholm. Great to see you, Alexander. Uh, welcome to the news out here on TRT World. Um, first of all, you know, when, when I see these, these images in Australia, I just think, you know, the world seems to be burning. We had Brazil, uh, California. We report on this almost, you know, monthly, weekly. Uh, has, is this linked to climate change? Yes, there's clearly a link. You, can, you cannot say it maybe for one particular event. You can, increasingly, it's, it's, it's easier to say afterwards uh, if one event was linked to climate change, that climate change made it more possible. But the general trend that we see that worldwide you see more bushfires, forest fires on so many different places, that is, there's a clear link to climate change. It is getting hotter, it is getting drier, and in periods of drought, the, the wood burns easier. Um, so that linkage is clear. It's exactly what scientists have been warning us for, for many, many decades. Okay, so they've been warning, and it is, you say, linked to climate change, but they're constantly described as unprecedented. Yes, and we will see more things that are unprecedented. We see now only one degree of warming. The predictions for at the end of this century are anything between more than two and a half to four, maybe even five degrees of warming. Um, so it is unprecedented and better be prepared, you know, as news media that you're going to report much more unprecedented news about the state of our environment in, in the years and decades to come. That really is concerning and, and very alarming. Um, would you say we've reached, I don't know, a point of, of no return? Is, is it too late for people to do anything, for policy, for, I don't know, for something to change? Well, that's the good news. Um, it is not too late. All scientists that have been warning so long are the very same scientists that say there is still time, but the window is rapidly closing. So we now have 10 years to reduce, let's say, 10% every year uh, of our um, CO2 emissions. That basically means uh, stop burning uh, fossil fuels. And there's a few other things related to agriculture that you have to think of. So we can still do it. If we would have started in about 2000, it would probably have been only like 2 or 3% a year. But if we wait another 10 years, we will have to reduce our emissions with 30% per year. And that is, of course, absolutely impossible. So we can do it, but it is really, really urgent that worldwide we start to take action. I'm sure that gives uh, a lot of our viewers at home a lot of hope um, hearing that it, it is not too late. But, um, you know, so much is said about political inaction. Um, what goes through your mind as an environmentalist when you see marches all over the world, conferences at the UN, um, the Paris Accord, and no, sometimes no follow-through follow or accountability for these governments to actually enact the policy? Well, there, there is a lot happening. I mean, it's not easy because it is what you normally call the tragedy of the commons. You know, everybody says somebody else should start first because the other has in the past uh, burned more or is burning more at this moment, or you just don't feel like it. You always hope that somebody else helps you out. So that's in international politics, not very much different than, let's say, cleaning up stuff in your neighborhood. So it takes time, but we do have the Paris Agreement that, except for one country that now wants to step out, every single country in the world has agreed upon, which is a very good start to work on. It's not the final solution, but it, it certainly sets us in the right direction. You see enormous, many, many po positive developments in the sense of more renewable energy, etc. And I think of the past 12 months, if we look back, maybe the most um, impressive development that I've seen is that actually the people are waking up and are going out in the streets to demonstrate, especially the youth is inspiring because this is their century, not my century anymore. They will live in this century and they, under the leadership of Greta Thunberg and many, many others like her in many countries, have mobilized the youth. They go out in the street with millions to convince people that it's really, really time to take action. Oh, Alexander, it's been really great to hear you giving us hope for a, a subject that can seem, you know, so out of control and, and out of our hands. Thank you so much for speaking to us on uh, the news hour on TRT World. Hope